Hey everyone, thank you for joining episode 22 of The Green Light. Today's episode is fantastic. We're going to talk about natural living, what it means and how to do it in order to upgrade your health at home. Nobody can speak about this better than our guest, Dr. Eric Zielinski, or Dr. Z, who is the author of the national bestseller, The Healing Power of Essential Oils and The Essential Oils Apothecary. He also co-authored another book with his wife, Sabrina Zielinski, or Mama Z, The Essential Oils Diet. Dr. Z has pioneered natural living and biblical health education since 2003. He trained as an aromatherapist, public health researcher, and chiropractor, and Dr. Z started naturallivingfamily.com in 2014 with his wife to help people learn how to use natural remedies like essential oils safely and effectively. Now visited by more than 4 million natural health seekers every year, naturallivingfamily.com has rapidly become the number one online resource for biblical health and non-branded essential oils education, giving you the opportunity to learn how to be healthy at home. The website has got a lot of amazing little courses that you can take and a blog that has got a lot of information on real applicable tips that you can do at home using essential oils and other beautiful herbs, even food, so that you can really feel your best. So, without further ado, let's dive into this beautiful world of natural living with our guest, Dr. Z. Hi, Dr. Z. Thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? I'm, I'm just excited. I'm really blessed and I'm so glad to just meet you. And, you know, one of the fun things is for people that listen to these podcasts, one of the my favorite parts of these interviews are when I have the pre-interview chat with hosts. And so this is a great opportunity just to meet people because there's so many people like us that do what we do. And it's oftentimes you need a podcast or you need a documentary or or you need something to bring us together. So I'm always, always excited to meet new friends in the natural health and natural living space. And yeah, I I guess you've been um, reading my stuff for a little while and you're familiar with Mama Z and Maya's work. So I'm just, I'm, I'm tickled pink to be here. Yeah, I'm really excited that you are. And uh, I I do love your work. I think it's so it's done in a way that is really approachable, really digestible. And it's easy to learn, which a lot of the times, as you know, when we study it, things can so get so complicated, and they don't need to be. Um, And this is a way for people to really gain their knowledge and have it at home all the time. Plus, in the world that we live in, we really need this. Those are essentials now. They're not even like optional, really. So I really recommend everybody um, goes on your website, gets your books and even your online courses that are brilliant. Um, But before, if people don't know you, uh, especially in Europe, maybe uh, they might not know you as much as the U.S., um, do you want to give us a little introduction about your story and how you got into natural living and uh, yeah, everything you've done? It's such an amazing story. I already know it, so I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. And, and you know, I'll preface by saying my story is a story that that's deeply rooted in faith. And the reality is, you know, as a Christian, I, I recognize my my spiritual obligation to take care of myself. I do see it as a spiritual obligation, but you know, there are a lot of folks that follow us online, and, and they don't resonate necessarily with our biblical perspective, but they appreciate where we come from because ultimately, what we're doing, we're going back to our roots. We're going back to our our the way that our ancestors lived, and the way that I I I I believe the way that God created us to live, and quite frankly, the more that I've been doing this and I've been living this way for about 20 years now, almost 20 years, is I find myself with this mindset of going back to Eden, like the Garden of Eden, the beautiful picturesque garden where Adam and Eve just lived and lived off the land. And there's something to be said about that. There's something to be said about being in this idyllic, perfect environment where you have all your needs met. I mean, they didn't even, again, you look at the Bible story and they didn't even have clothes right? They're naked in the land. Just think about the temperature. Just think about the water supply that they needed. Um, They were, of course, vegan at that time. And, you know, ultimately my story came from when I was born in 1980, I was born in the exact opposite of that environment. And, and, And living in Metro Detroit, it was quite frankly, one of the Arguably, I would say one of the most unhealthiest generations that we have seen in America, um, because that was the 
the advent of a lot of the chemicals that we now see today, like that's when GMOs, genetically modified organisms were invented in the seventies and eighties. It's where a lot of the phosphates and a lot of the triclosans and a lot of the chemicals that we see evolved into basically all of our body care products. And, and that's where you start seeing a lot of the hormones in the milks. And, and so I was just born in this, in this perfect environment, not perfect, but it was like the environment where antibiotics were the cure for everything. A lot of babies were, did, a lot of mothers were discouraged from nursing and they were feeding their children infant formula, um, which by the way, if you can't nurse or if you have a problem with milk supply, I understand, but it was almost like there was no choice for a lot of women. It's like, well, this is what you do. Just, just get your kid on, on Similac or get your kid on this infant formula. And I, I was born in this sad American diet, I call it the sad, right? The standard American diet mentality where we had bologna and craft singles and white wonder bread. And ultimately what happened was I developed clinical obesity when I was a baby. Um, and I, I, I have, I've leaked out some photos. I only have one photo from when I was a kid. I was so big as a baby that my mom was feeding me whole milk and infant formula. The doctor actually put me on a diet and, and I was so big, so chubby. I was so overweight that I started, I started as an obese baby that the diet, the doctor put me on a 2% milk diet. And ultimately my mom found a groove in, in how to help me lose a little weight. And, but you know what happened though? As I got older, I started to develop chronic ear infections, chronic sore throat, strep infections. I started getting chronic GI issues, gas, bloating, um, developed when I was a teenager into cystic acne. And I was really a wreck, chronic pain as a teenager, young adult. Um, I, I was at a point where spiritually I had no purpose mentally, emotionally, I started to develop some significant social phobias because of the way that I looked and the way that I wasn't really excited about and I wasn't proud of, or I wasn't, um, I wasn't at peace with who I was as a person, um, especially my appearance. And, and ultimately I fell into significant depression, anxiety. I even contemplated taking my life. And so in the mix of all that though, medicine, modern medicine was my go-to. So for example, the airaches and the, you know, the throat infections that I had on a regular basis. What do you do? Well, I go to the doctor, get an antibiotic and third grade, they couldn't figure out how to solve the problem, right? They never thought about dairy. They never thought about gluten. They never thought about sugar. They never thought about my diet or any other thing. So they, they extracted my adenoids and tonsils tonsillectomy, adenectomy. It's like, okay, a vital part of my immune system, my lymphatic system, they just removed because it, they kept on getting inflamed. Well, why was my body getting inflamed? Well, that was just the lifestyle. And then when, when I developed horrible acne, I was prescribed Accutane, which is known as the suicide drug. And I'm not saying the reason why I had suicidal thoughts was because of Accutane, but a few years later, after being on that drug, it did help clear my skin, but at what cost? And here I was as, as a young adult, I never forget going to a neurologist. I had an MRI done and they're looking at like, why was I in such pain? Why was I chronically, my back was always, I was again, just not a good, healthy young man. And this doctor said to me, what did you do to yourself? You have, you have a spine of a 50 year old. And so ultimately I had my proverbial come in the Jesus moment when I really became a Christian, I was enlightened. I, I recognized my need. I recognize my need for a savior. I recognize my need for a higher purpose. And at 22 years old, my life drastically changed. And at that point I was self-medicating with alcohol, with, with nicotine, smoking a pack of cigarettes a day. I was abusing cocaine, narcotics, um, Vicodin, painkillers, anything to quote, numb the emotional pain but also numb the physical pain. And so when I had my, my born again moment, everything changed, like literally everything changed. And the thing about that, that was really important was my mentor at the time told me like, Eric, your body is the temple of the Holy spirit. You got to take care of it. You can't be living this way. You can't be drinking this garbage and you can't be smoking that you can't be eating this. you got to take care of yourself. And he today, his name is Enoch. 
78 years old, can still run circles around me, can still bench press 250 pounds. And I saw a man um, as an example that I never had of someone who could live a healthy, abundant life. And even today he's on zero medication, defies all odds. He's beaten cancer twice and all the things that he's done. And so that brought me to a place where from my pain was birthed a passion. And so one by one by one by one, started looking at my diet, started looking at how I manage stress, meditation practices, mind-body practices that people oftentimes in the Christian world aren't even willing to consider. But I have a very open mind in that, you know, there's, there's many different ways of painting a wall. And if it doesn't fit in the box that we were told, then maybe we got to get outside of that. And so anyway, here I am today, a long story short, 20 years later with my wife, and we have grown this, this Bible health ministry where we help millions of people, 5 million people plus a year visit our website. We're in documentaries, we're in summits and TV and podcasts. People want to learn how we've lived the way that we live. And our thing is this, we are focused on a detoxed type of lifestyle. We're focused on removing and separating ourselves from those chemicals that we know hurt us and replacing them with abundant life-giving products. And typically you'll find that essential oils are in virtually everything that we use when it comes to cleaning and body care, it flavors your food. People don't recognize how ubiquitous and widespread essential oils are. They're everywhere, mm -hmm. they're everywhere. And so I found that the essential oil was really the crux. And not only was it what I was missing for my medicine cabinet, for pain and for fungal infections or for bruises or for whatever it might be. So it, not only did essential oils replace the harmful medication that was in my medicine cabinet, but they also became a core part of how we DIY, how we do it ourselves. And that's something that my wife and I've really been working on since we've been married almost 16 years now. Everything from body care to cleaning products, we make our own food, we garden, um, just this wonderful self-sustaining and dare I say the word empowering lifestyle that we know how to take care of ourselves. We know how to take care of our family. And, and this is one of those things, quite frankly, where you don't need a doctor, you don't need a certification, you don't need quote education to do any of this stuff. This is, and I'm use the word bluntly, common sense that we have forgotten. And this is, I believe, our God-given right to take care of ourselves that people have co-opted to governments, to big manufacturers, to big medicine. Ultimately, you know, in my first book, I, I know you know, you, you've read this, right? In the introduction of my first book, I quote this Medscape article that really summarizes this whole thing. And that talked about in a, an emergency room doctor talked about how 75 plus 80% of all people that visit the emergency room have no quote business being in the emergency room. They shouldn't be there. It's for simple aches and sprains and cuts and bruises and things, things that we should, and we did take care of. And it's not to say don't go to the emergency room, but what the purpose of is that this doctor was saying, not only are these people going again, sniffles, colds, sore throats, not only do most people go to the emergency room for non-emergency related conditions, but you know what? A majority of them demand at medication. They go into the emergency room wanting antibiotics. They want a prescription. They want a painkiller. And this doctor was saying, we have to flip the script on this. We have to change the mindset where we need to give people more. And this is what I do. We need to give people more of the fishing pole. So they learn how to fish themselves. Right. And at the end of the day, you know, if there's one, if there's one phrase that really summarizes one thing that we've done, and it's come to me recently as I've built this, this Bible health ministry with my team. And we have people that work for us all over the country and all over the world. And so it's just a wonderful group of people that support us and love us. And we came upon this recently. Like if there's one thing that, that summarizes everything, it's three words. You are four words. You are the cure. Mm. Um, just think about that. Those simple four words. You are the cure. You are the solution you are the answer. We have everything at our disposal. We have been so magnificently created by God 
We have the divine genius and the creativity of God within us to do anything. If we put our mind to it, if we focus on the right positive things, we do it for the right reasons, surround ourselves with the right people. Intention and purpose is so key. Having the right intention, but also being intentional. And like, how does this have anything to do with essential oils? Well, or natural living, or well, or just health in general. How can we fulfill our God-given purpose in life if we're sick, if we're lied up in bed, if we're not taking care of this, this body, the, the physical manifestation of who we are? If, if, our, if this physical, what we call this earth suit, is weighing us down physically, we can never be who we are supposed to be and called to be emotionally, mentally, financially, socially. And that's why, quite frankly, why we saw after the pandemic and during the pandemic, the world crumbled. The world crumbled not because of a virus. The world crumbled because of the lack of preparedness, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually for such a, a, a travesty as what happened. And quite frankly, not being prepared for the basic things like immune boosting health, how to take care of yourself when you're sick. You know, I'll never forget in America when it really, the big problem, everyone was closing down stores, the mandates, everyone's like, hey, you got five hours left and all the stores are closing. Like everyone's rushing to go buy things. You know, what, what, was, what, what shelves were empty? Toilet paper, paper towel, condoms, and hand sanitizer and soap. Just think about that. So just chew on that for a minute. <laughs> what were we, and beer and beer, by the way, beer. Yeah, loads of alcohol. Right? Yeah, a lot. A, the beer was gone. The milk was gone. The condoms were gone. People wanted their their toilet paper, and well, out of all those things, you know, we can make our own milk, and we we do vegan milk. We we actually have we make our own almond milk, and we can do that. But okay, I'm not going to make my own toilet paper, but bidets are healthier for you anyway, but not many, many people have that. But let's go to the hand sanitizer and the soap thing. I'll never forget because that was a big thing in America, especially everyone's using hand sanitizer. Everyone's using soap. We make our own for pennies on the dollar. And I just remember just having a moment, just a clarity, like in the height of the pandemic, like in 2020 in April, when it really, really created like just America just melted down. I just remember having a moment where I just saw the news and showing pictures of the shelves. Again, no more condoms, no more beer, no more milk, no more sand sanitizer, no more soap. Everyone's freaking out. Where's my soap? And I just remember looking at my wife. I'm like, it's, we're okay. I just remember that moment of just thinking we're okay. Because A, we have soap on hand that we make and we know how to make it and we have the supplies to make it. And it's so simple, just a little Castile soap, a little bit of essential oil, a little bit of water. You get your, 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 your pumper that you can get on Amazon or online retailer, your foam pumper, and you're done. I mean, it's that simple, but there are other recipes and stuff. But I just remember that moment of... You know what it was for me? It was like all this work, all this research, all the trial and error, all these, like my wife calls them her, her gluten-free hockey pucks. Like we've had a lot of failed recipes over the years, trying to figure out how to make like good breads and, and healthy versions of all the things that our friends eat pizzas and ice creams and stuff. Like we have all healthy versions of all that stuff. I remember all the failures, all the trial and error, all the research and development, R&D. And then having this moment like, wow, you know what? All that paid off. And here we are, the world's shutting down. All the stores are closed. We have enough food. We've canned. We've preserved. We know how to do that. We garden. We actually are growing food as we speak. We can make our own body care. We can make our own cleaning products. We're good. And we also, you know, we have five children, soon to be six. So we have things frozen in the freezer. We have a deep freeze. Like we, we were absolutely prepared for this moment. Um, and the one, a couple of things we didn't have that I learned, exercise equipment as much as I wanted. So we built a home gym because of that. Took a while. But there were a couple of things we realized, okay, we, we weren't prepared for everything, but our basic necessities. And you know what the reality is, though? Again, the basic necessities for your medicine the basic necessities for your food, for your stuff. And this isn't like, we're not preppers. You know, we're, we're not in the homestead. Like we are just your, we live in the city. We call ourselves urban homesteaders, if anything. 
but this is the way our great, great grandparents lived. And maybe our great grandparents lived. And my family comes from Sicily and my family comes from Poland. And this is the way I'll never forget. This is the way you just take care of yourself. And so I, if anything, I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to say on this show when you invited me on, but it's coming to me now. Like if there's one thing I want to leave you all with, especially for those of you in Europe who've been really affected by the pandemic, much more than America in a lot of ways, is that you can, at the very least, have the peace of mind that you can take care of your family and that you are in control of your health. You truly are in control of your health. And you have everything at your disposal. It takes a little work, takes a little money, and it takes some trial and error, but be patient with the process. And the end result is what we call the five Ps. Proper planning prevents poor performance. And that really, that right there is what made the world crumble is people weren't prepared. Yeah. And they not, were only prepared for their health. They weren't even prepared to work at home, to homeschool their kids. Their whole world got shifted. Wow. And I will say I had a big awakening. I wasn't prepared to homeschool my kids either. That was, a, that was, a, that was tough. I mean, I have a, a business, a digital business online. So I had to adjust. And we we're learning different strategies on how to do that. So that's the thing I want to empower you all with and leave you with is you can have that peace of mind, but also to know that if your child does have a 102, 103, or 104 temperature, you don't need to run to the hospital. You know what to do. If you yourself cut yourself and you want to make sure that, you know, do you need stitches or not? You know, you, you, you know how to make that decision properly. And you know what you end up doing? You end up saving thousands of dollars in medical bills. You end up saving a lot of time. And you end up saving... A lot of, I don't want to say pride, but power that we give away to establishments that ultimately control our food supply, our medical supply. And it's like, wow, getting some of that power back. That's life. Yeah, it's worth a lot. I mean, our, our health is a wealth. The problem, I think, is that we shifted everything becoming very dependent and uh, being told that it's this uh, paradigm divide where you either are all about understanding health and, and working towards getting knowledge. And then the other side is, well, you actually cannot possibly know this. You need to trust a medical practitioner, which for certain things you absolutely do. I mean, if you have an accident, you're not going to take, you know, T3 on it. You're going to have to go to the hospital. But if you are uh, you know, for the little things, if you are just uh, nursing a sore throat or you have fever, as you said, you really can be empowered to know what to do in a way that your body actually builds immunity to it. And as you said, we went into this pandemic with chaos, with uh, stress. But one of the reasons why this was done as well is this made a, made people want to go back to their normal lives so much they were they were willing to take an experimental shot. And very quickly, without even questioning it. And I think that's probably where, you know, we fail the most as humans by not by saying, okay, we can trust the medical professionals, but the information is not linear. It's not, you know, it's not all out there. We don't know a lot of things, there are a lot of question marks, but yet we're trusting that everything is fine just by having a, you know, a shot. And, and I think that really took a lot of power away from people just for people to go back to their normal life, you know, to go back to to school, to the gym. And uh, the ones that are prepared, that were prepared, were the ones that stopped and, and think about it and be like, you know what, I can actually do this um, on my own. I can actually be okay. I can prepare. I can be positive and I can connect to people that know what to do so that I don't stress out and, and freak out. Um, I've seen this, you know, we, we moved to Portugal from London and I'm really happy we did at the time we did a year before anything went down. But uh, we also like you uh, have a farm. Well, we actually not, we have a proper farm, <laughs> so, but we, we are growing our food like you and, uh, you know, just like you make our own products and are very, very independent. If anything happens, we can be OK. 
Um, but uh, we saw a lot of people that we knew that, that were not prepared. However, thankfully, a, a portion of them were open-minded enough to actually say, you know, I'm not going to freak out. I'm just going to do things. I'm going to prepare from now because it's never too late to really, to really prepare if you don't stress and if, if you don't fall into that chaos. Um, so and this is actually when I think I found you in 2020. Um, it wasn't because of the pandemic itself, but I, a friend of mine was spending more time at home and she was self-educating, which I was very happy to see. And she shared um, one of your emails and that's how I got into it. So, um, you know, I was catching up with all the episodes of the podcast <laughs> it was good, through everything. It was great. And um, it was such an empowering even journey for me that I started sharing with people. And so I, um, you know, if people don't know what natural living really is, because I think there's the, this other thing, a lot of buzzwords out there. And um, what does natural living really means to you and natural health? Like, what does that really mean to you if you have to bring it home? You know, I, I, I think one thing we need to be careful of, and I talk about this in, in our documentary a little bit, um, and maybe we'll get a, a moment to talk about the hope yeah. for breast cancer. But one thing that dawned on me when I was directing that film was it's not all or nothing. And in our mind, we oftentimes think you either are going to go a hundred percent quote, natural, holistic alternative is another word for it. Or the other end of the spectrum is you're a hundred percent allopathic or hundred percent medical. You're hundred percent going to do the pharmacy way. I don't think that's the proper approach to anything in life, quite frankly. I mean, there are very, very few things that are black and white like that. And so what we propose, this natural living mindset is, is what's, you know, what's made in a factory versus what's made in nature. End of the day, what's man-made versus what's God made. And we find ourselves when research, we find ourselves going back to research to prove what natural therapies, natural compounds do. And we find like, wow, this, this stuff, these things out in nature are extremely effective at managing health concerns. They're also necessary. They're necessary. And, and I've heard of stories and reports of, let's say astronauts, for example, who were being tested on whether or not they could be up into, you know, space without physical food. So they would have some sort of vitamin or have some sort of liquid intravenous or something to just full of quote nutrients and their body couldn't respond to that. They ended up with diarrhea. They ended up with hemorrhaging concerns. They, they, they made them sick. We, Natural versus unnatural, it's something where we are created, we are designed to interact with nature, to smell nature, to touch nature, to eat nature. So when you have something that's synthetic, every single time, and this is, this is the mind-boggling thing about this whole discussion is why it's even allowed. Synthetic hurts the body. Because there are certain mechanoreceptors, neuroreceptors around our cell. Each cell membrane has different lock and key mechanisms that interact with chemicals that we find in nature. And so when, you're, when you get a synthetic version of that, the body doesn't know what to do with it. And this is one of the keys and one of the interesting things about what we do is when we try to help people get away from toxins and people don't even sometimes even recognize what a toxin is, right? I mean, this isn't, this isn't something like in Chernobyl. This isn't like nuclear waste. We're talking things that are in your food, things that are in your water supply, like chlorine, fluoride. This is pesticides, things that are everywhere. They're, they're micro doses, of toxins that won't kill you today. They won't kill you today. But over years of use, years of abuse, they will end up wearing down your body. And you talk to any, any oncologist who knows what they're talking about, a cancer doctor, and they'll tell you that cancer in itself is an environmental disease. That once your body gets to the point where your body cannot manage the toxic overload that it's been dealing with for years, it's a chronic condition, You'll, your, your, your cells will start to be diseased. They'll start to just wear down and break down. And that's where cancer develops. It's a toxicity problem. Yeah. 
from what even the environmental protection agency has gone on record to say that the air that we breathe in our home is at least two to three times more polluted than the air outside. Yeah. At least some reports say up to a hundred times more polluted. This is supposed to be a healthy place inside. Mm. So natural living gets us back to our roots. Natural living brings us back to the garden of Eden. Natural living brings us to a place where we are bringing outside in as much as possible. What's that mean? Well, maybe we can talk a little about forest bathing. There's so many different things to talk about here, right? But being outside is extremely healing. The vitamin D, the fresh air that you breathe, but it's not just the fresh air, the chemicals that are being emitted from the plants. And I use the word chemical because they are, they're VOCs, they're, they're volatile organic chemicals. They are chemicals that readily evaporate. So when you put your nose into a rose or you're walking through a lavender field, and you smell the aroma of the flowers, that's because they're plant phytochemicals or plant-based chemicals that are being emitted from the plants. Interact with your nose, tell your nose, hey, there's a smell, boom, your sense of smell is hardwired to your brain and it produces a mood, a memory, an emotion, helps regulate your autonomic function. And so that's why it's so important to be outside, to smell those life-giving VOCs. Well, going back to natural versus unnatural, harmful VOCs, are what you smell from your building materials. When you open up the plastic casing from your mattress and it just stinks and your paint and from whatever it is from your carpet, just inside your house, emitting toxic chemicals that are volatile, meaning they, they evaporate, organic, meaning they're carbon-based, but they, those are death producing, not abundant life-giving chemicals. Same thing with your fragrances, your artificial fragrances artificial flavoring. These are harmful chemicals. And so what we see is what, what, what we have done as a people is we've taken what we want from nature that we like. We like the taste. We like the, the, the smells, the aromas. We like that. And we try to mass produce it and sell it. And every time we do that, we get ourselves in, in, Trouble. in a pickle <laughs> because our body cannot properly interact with these chemicals. And here's the reality of it. When you expose yourself to any sort of fragrance, artificial, any sort of artificial flavoring, any sort of pesticide, any sort of chemical that's in your cleaning products or any sort of whatever you might be drinking, your body interprets that as, as an environmental threat. So here's what happens. Your immune system gets stimulated. And so I've seen some reports that claim that drinking a soda like a Coca-Cola, just one can of Coca-Cola compromises your immune function for four to six hours. Wow. It's like you were just walking into a COVID filled room with everyone coughing and sneezing with COVID and you just walked right in and you're breathing all that. And now your immune system is just on high alert, trying to kill it, trying to cleanse the body of the virus, trying to do what it is. That's what happens when you drink a Coca-Cola. But here's the problem though. What happens when you're drinking that Coca-Cola and you compromise your immune system and then you walk into, let's say a COVID filled room. Well, now you're putting your body at risk because now your body can't fight it off like it was designed to. And that's what's happening all the time. Not just from drinking Coca-Cola, but from the chemicals that we put on our skin. Do you know they've done umbilical blood cord studies, umbilical cord blood studies on babies. And they found over 200 chemicals of which nearly a hundred of them were cancer causing in the umbilical cord blood of an infant. Wow. Because of mom, the, the chemicals that mom innocently, ignorantly are putting on her body, the lipstick, mm -hmm. the perfumes, the body care, the cleaning products, the food, the food, the drinks, the food, the drinks. Yeah. <laughs> What's it doing? The chemicals are going into the baby. Yeah. Why do babies have cancer? Why does God allow bad things to happen to children? Well, maybe it's not, maybe we shouldn't be pointing the finger at the almighty. Maybe we should be pointing the finger back at us. But like, what are we doing? Yeah. Right. And so when we see how ubiquitous, how far reaching chemicals are, and, and again, hundreds of thousands of chemicals we're exposed to every day. Now, what we try to do is we try to reverse that and, and bring in plant-based chemicals. Mm -hmm. So we haven't, and so natural living to us means we have an air purifier in every room. 
Natural living to us means that we try to make and grow as much food as we can. But of course, we live in the city. We don't have a farm like you, so we can't grow all of our food. But when we do buy food, we try to buy the best, healthiest we can. And natural living to us means we go towards natural versions, plant-based versions of cleaners, not synthetic versions of cleaners and body care. We don't make all of our stuff. We make a lot of it though. And the stuff that we don't have the time to make or we don't want to make, we'll buy. But we, we, we buy plant-based versions that are not toxic to the body. That's essentially it. You look at your, this is, the, this is a black and white, by the way. Very few things are black and white in this world. And one of this is this, something that you eat, something that you drink, something that you put on your body or you smell will either be toxic or it won't. Yeah. There is no, oh, almost toxic. No, no. It's either going to hurt you or it's going to help you. There's no, there's no gray. So what we've tried to do this natural living lifestyle is try to put as much good, healthy things that will produce life in our body and try to stay away from anything that could harm us. And that is a never ending battle and it's a never ending journey. And it's also very exciting. And it's something where we've taken the challenge. And that's why I think so many people read our books and followed our blog, because quite frankly, we've done the work for y'all. Mm-hmm. I mean, the recipes work and people love the food, especially my wife's coming out with a whole new series of food recipes and things that she makes on a regular basis. People want, like, I want a healthy version of bread. I want a healthy version of Caesar dressing. I want a healthy version of this. We get it. So that's really what natural living is. And I want to encourage people that when you bring that outside in, your whole life changes. So now you could see if you're looking or if you're listening, you can't see it, but we have plants in our home all over our house, right? And even if you live in an apartment, you can have plants, grow your own tomatoes in a pot. You could grow your own herbs, bringing plants inside, right? Enjoying fresh air, opening up your windows, getting outside is so important breathing that air, getting the sunlight, being out, touching the leaves and the trees, and just, just in embracing that. And so ultimately it's a, it's a life that you'll find you'll be less stressed, more capable to manage stress. And when chaos happens and there will be another epidemic, there will be another pandemic, there will be another financial crisis. There will be another, right? Whether it's a divorce or a business that fails, or a loved one that dies, crises will happen. But having something that you could go to to help you, instead of running to something that you know is going to hurt you, ultimately, that's the best way to go. And the benefits are wonderful. You know, some people we've helped that have followed our work, they don't change their diet. They don't change their exercise plan. They got it in their head. You know what? I got to, their first step is I want to steer away from these, these toxic cleaners and these body care products and stuff. And you know, they've come back to us and said, I've lost weight. Mm-hmm. I just lost five pounds in the last two weeks. And I've done nothing different, but just take away toxins and replace, and not food toxins. I'm talking just body care and cleaning products. And you know why? Because your body starts to function better when it's not under that constant in, insult. Yeah, hormonal balance. And that's balance. really what it is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I love that you actually have a background in research and everything that you share is always has that research behind it because um, so we always get into that gray area when people say, yeah, but this is not scientific. Um, but science actually has been proven many, many times, it's been proving many, many times that, as you said, going natural uh, to the compounds that are from nature and not altered or, uh, you know, uh, made as similar to, but not really from nature, um, are better for you. Like, there's no really an argument there. As you said, it's either going to hurt you or it's going to help you. And um, so that's really brilliant because, again, it, we can get into the fact that this is becoming a trend to be more natural, but a lot of people do it without the backing of research, and that can hurt the whole movement. So in your case, it's, it's great that everything that you share has the documentation behind it as the research. So people can always, you know, double check for themselves, which we, I guess, highly encourage because we want people to be thinking for themselves. Um, so that's really good. And, you know, compare in comparison to 10 years ago, even now, the, the fact that we have accessibility to these natural products in stores. Yes, we have to probably here in Europe, we have to go to more like um, health stores or organic stores to get them. I don't know if in the US, you have them available in um, 
mainstream stores, but they are there. 10 years ago, it was really hard to find them. Um, you know, things that didn't have power bins and so on, and SLS and so on. So I, I just think the shift is so powerful that even big companies that don't necessarily do anything right for the planet or for health are picking up on it and are trying to come out with the more organic. Now, of course, uh, I, per, I personally support smaller brands if I have to buy things because I rather support a family business and someone that is really not a massive corporation. Um, but, you know, if it's not available in some places, they have access to that, which before wasn't even the case. So it's becoming more and more, um, you know, wanted, which is great. The demand is there, so the supply should be as well. And um, so my other question is, you know, you, you obviously – I already kind of mentioned it, but why out of this, um, you know, nat natural living approach, why essential oils are your go-to or the biggest thing that you really focus on? Yeah, I mean, quite frankly, there there's no one that I know online that educates on essential oils that that don't sell them. And that's not a bad thing. You know, I, I, I'm a capitalist at heart and I understand that people need and want to make a living and they have businesses. But you'll find 99% of every blog article of everything that you'll see online, social media of, of someone teaching on how to use essential oils, they're financially biased, just, just bluntly, period. And again, I get it, no big deal. But there's like no one out there that says, hey, I'm just a researcher, I'm an author, I'm a speaker, let me just talk about this topic. And I'm not selling them. And, and when I realize that, because the reality is, as a public health researcher, financial bias is a huge red flag for credibility, for efficacy, for objective viewpoints. And so when I was commissioned at the time, this was what, seven, eight years ago, to write a series of public health reports on essential oils by a client of mine, I hit a wall really quick. I'm like, wow, I, I really can't, other than PubMed, other than a indexed, um, research journal, but even them, many of which, half of which were, were funded by, by the essential oil industry companies, I realized this is really hard to get unbiased information to quote somebody. And so I just said, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to do that because I realized the importance of it. My wife, her life was transformed by essential oils. They were very helpful in my life. And I just started falling in love with it. And I, quite frankly, I did a, I had no idea. This was not part of my vision board. This is not why I went to school. Um, I really didn't realize that God was going to lead me to be a voice necessarily in this internet world, in this internet wilderness, speaking on essential oils. And, you know, at the core of what we do is a biblical faith-based message on how to be healthy. And hey, I'll leave it to the nutritionist to talk about nutrition. I'll leave it to the functional medical doctors to talk about, you know, targeted supplementation for disease and things like that. But there was nobody. And so you go to supply and demand. Um, I saw a need. And then next thing you know, here we are now, nearly seven years later. And it's, I've written four or three books and um, thinking about the fourth, but you know what, I'm going to take a little break because at this point, Unfortunately, the research hasn't been keeping up. We, we don't have big pockets like Big Pharma. And so what I found is we have enough for me. And this last book, the, um, the one that you pulled it up, The Essential Oils Apothecary, I mean, this is the culmination of what essential oils can do. Yeah. The, the advanced strategies and protocols for chronic disease. I mean, we talk about Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, um, diabetes. We talk about like real, real hard to treat conditions and life-threatening conditions like cancer, right? Um, stroke. And, and this is uh, ultimately as far reaching as I could see essential oils can go. And so you, you cover the body care, you cover the cleaning products. That was my first book. We cover the whole diet approach. That was the second book. And now this is chronic disease. It's like, that's it. And I don't, quite frankly, I don't want to write a book for the sake of writing another book. And so when my publisher reached out recently said, Hey, you want to do a fourth? I'm like, no, I, I mean, what else can I write about? This is it. Now it's a matter of doing it right now. It's a matter of inspiring and encouraging people. We just got to start moving towards this direction. So I'll just tell you this. 
again, because I'm not selling an essential oil, I could say this, um, you need to have essential oils. Everyone needs to have them. It is the basis for your medicine. And it is the basis for all modern medicine. We didn't even cover that, by the way. The chemical structure of the essential oil is the basis for virtually every medicine on the planet today. That's a fact. It's not like a chemist or pharmacist just invents a chemical structure in their mind and come up with a drug. No, they, they see what works in nature. They synthetically manufacture it. They put preservatives on it to extend the shelf life, and then they sell it on the market. That's medicine today. Well, if you want plant medicine, you have to have essential oils. And then if you want to make your own body care, you have to have essential oils. And if you want to do your own cleaning products, you have to have essential oils too. And I even propose that they're fantastic and should be in your food. Because oftentimes what we do is we use dry herbs, which are nice, but dry herbs dehydrate the essential oil. And so you don't get the medicinal effect when you're putting in basil or oregano or, or, or cilantro in your dishes. And just one drop goes a long way. So that's, that's to me, my sales pitch is that if you wanna get back to nature, if you want to enjoy more of a natural living lifestyle, essential oils are a key part of it. It's not the only part, but it's a key part of virtually every aspect of how you're gonna live. Even to your aroma in your home, if you, you'll see behind me, if you're watching, if you're listening, I'm pointing to my diffuser, I don't have aerosols. We don't have poo-poo sprays. We don't have plugins. Those toxic chemicals that have been linked to Alzheimer's, dementia, cancer, autoimmunity, allergies, respiratory problems. We don't have that stuff in my home. We create a healthy, happy environment with smell that we like with essential oils. So it's our, you know what I mean? It's like, it, it's every aspect, yeah. every aspect of health. And so that's why it's important because it's one of those things that you'll find like everywhere. And it's also one of those things that are quite frankly, largely misunderstood. And so I encourage people to check them out, go to your local health food store, get a starter kit, go online, find a good, you know, we, we teach people how to find good brands and things like that, but find a company that you like and that you trust, find, find certain blends that you like, that, that you respond well to and start to play around, start to experiment, start to quote, practice aromatherapy. Like your, your doctor practices medicine. Your doctor doesn't know everything. Mm -hmm. You know, she will prescribe things and then she'll say, Oh, let's, let's change it. Let's it's called practice for a reason. You have to practice this natural living lifestyle too. And but you don't need to get certified. You need to know the basics though. And I think it's really important. You need to know the basics because you could hurt yourself. You could burn yourself. You, you could, you could, I've ruined clothes. It's like, you just got to be careful. These are super, super potent, right? So when you're holding up a bottle of essential oil, a bottle of lavender, you're looking at like three pounds of lavender flowers. Yeah. That's hard to conceptualize. So as much, and this, and let's be honest though, as much as essential oils are quote unquote natural, they're man-made. You're not going to walk into a lavender field in, in, in and France, with the, with the right? You're not going to see yeah. lavender oil. So yeah. let's be real, right? Let's be, let's be real here. They are very concentrated plant matter that yeah. you can only get by extracting through a man-made, a man-made technology, which to me is why I like to blend, you know, natural versus this is that's essential oils are the perfect blend mm. of natural versus unnatural. And um, so for people that haven't done your course, which again, we uh, will put it in the show notes because I think it's really helpful, yeah. uh, start from the book. Um, a lot of times I've seen there's not a lot of regulation around oils. Yeah. And I've seen oils that I wear actually not natural. They have 100% essential oil on it. But when you smell them, you can tell that that's synthetic. So how do people navigate this really tricky um, if they have to get like one tip from you on the, on the podcast, one, you know, this really tricky route to getting really good oils, because it can get quite confusing, especially if they, if they shop online. I mean, if you go to a store, most likely you'll get brands that are generally always the same two or three brands, you know, like uh, Tisserand is a good one that we have in Europe. I think actually you have it in the U S as well. Um, they have a couple here that are pretty good. 
Um, but for the most part, if people shop online, it can get quite tricky, especially if they go on Amazon. Uh, I've done that experiment. Let's just say it didn't go well. <laughs> and um, I was like, oh, yeah, this is not natural. I, I had to complain. But they replied saying, well, you can't really do anything about it. There's no regulation. And so a lot of people will find themselves into that, right? And, you know, get headaches from, and that's the, the minimum, from the, the oils. And um, worse, if they're really bad quality, so what should they look for? Yeah, well, first, I wouldn't go on Amazon to buy essential oils um, unless you're buying direct through the company. And that gets tricky because a lot of sellers resell. And just like how I would never want to buy my, my medicine on Amazon, I would never want to buy that. And that, that's at the end of the day, if you're going to use essential oils as medicine, you want to make sure it's untampered, hasn't been adulterated or touched. So I would go directly with the supplier or directly with the company. And like, like Tisserin and like others, they, re, they post their batch specific chemical analysis is known as a GCMS, a gas chromatography mass spectrometry report. Not that I expect you to be an organic chemist or understand aromatherapy chemistry. You don't need that. But, but, but just know the fact that they are reporting and, and publicly displaying their batch analysis is a level of transparency that is at this point non-negotiable. So if you're not willing, it's just like buying a, a food item, like would you buy a box of food at the store without seeing the ingredients? I hope the answer is no. But you know what I mean? Like you should at least know what's in that thing. And you'll find that every company that's doing it, they're posting their batch reports with pride because they, they passed the analysis. There's no adulterants, there's no added chemicals, there's no preservatives or, or pesticides. That's the purpose of it. So just click on it and look at the executive summary by the chemical analysis or by the, um, the chemical lab or the lab that did the analysis. And you'll see within normal ranges, no adulterants detected, just a simple, quick little one or two liner. That's it. I mean, that right there, I would never buy an oil that doesn't have that readily available. And if you like it, and also quite frankly, a lot of this is, is it needs to be and has been grassroots. We need mm -hmm. to ask, we need to be part of a group of people, loved ones, friends, family, neighbors, I don't know. But we need, it's very, very few people are completely isolated all along. And with an internet, it's, I would say virtually no one is now. So meaning this, let's say you are completely isolated from your family and friends and that you're the only one who wants to do this. Okay. There are people online that you could easily quickly find in social media chat rooms and all that stuff. You need to start developing relationships with people that you could just ask and people that you could develop trust. And I see this all the time in chat groups. Hey, what oils are you using? Blah, 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 blah. What is that, right? We have these groups. You have groups, right? People that where you support. But ultimately, I would ask for a referral from someone that you trust or go to your local health food store and just try a couple of them that are, that are available. And ultimately, you need to get something that, that you find um, appealing. And that's really important is your body has to respond well. And so just because something is pure, which means it has no adulterants, no added chemicals in it, it's literally just pure essential oil. That doesn't mean it's going to work for you. And just because something's pure doesn't mean it's going to be safe. You have to use it the right way. So we go into this and, and I know we're running out of time, but we go into what's known as the organoleptic evaluation. All this stuff's on my, in my books, on my blog, like how to see if an oil, like how to see if your body responds well to something. And by the way, you should be doing this with anything, mm -hmm. just like how you're not going to clean your whole entire carpet with a brand new cleaner first. What, the, what do the instructions say? Go to the corner that no one can see, test the piece of carpet that no one can look at or no one can tell. And if it stains, well, you don't want to use this cleaner. You want to test something first. If it doesn't stain, okay, you could use it on the rest of your carpet. You want to do skin, pass, skin patch test. You want to do culinary test. You want to do inhalation test. You want to make sure that your body responds well to something. And literally, if you open up a bottle of lavender and if you get a headache or if you open up a bottle of peppermint and if you get anxiety, that doesn't mean the oil's bad. That just means that your body's not responding well to it for a myriad of reasons. Yeah. We forget we are we full of chemical reactions in our body. We are yeah. going to chemically react to things. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's important. And by the way, 
you should be doing that with your supplements. Yeah. You should be doing that with your medicine. You should be doing that with your body care. You should be doing it with anything. You should test first before you buy a big whatever. Yeah. And that's something to really consider because we oftentimes just take what the doctor says. We, we suffer through the symptoms. Well, maybe there's another approach. Maybe you shouldn't have to suffer through a symptom. And let me tell you this, using essential oils, you should have zero negative reaction. None, mm. none, no pain, no, no rashes on your skin, no indigestion, no headaches, no nausea, no, no mood imbalance, zero. There are zero side effects, zero, if you use them the right way. Yeah. And the only reason why you'll have any sort of negative reaction is you're not using them the right way. They're not properly diluted or, um, well, they could be adulterated. They're not real. They're fake. Or you're, for some reason, your body just isn't able to react properly with the chemical components of that particular oil. But yeah. you'll find that today your body might not jive well with that oil, but a year from now it could. Maybe you need a detox. Maybe you need a cleanse. Maybe you need to lose some weight. There's a million reasons why. I'll never forget teaching a class years ago and a gentleman said, oh, this peppermint's giving me a headache. I didn't have a headache. Well, he was 300 pounds, clinically obese. And it hit me like, you know what? His body can't handle this right now. Mm -hmm. Like he needs to start slower, something not so potent, like peppermint. Pop, peppermint will hit you hard. Oh yeah. It's a, it's a high <laughs> note. You know, there's high, middle, low note. There's different, there's different strengths. Oregano, maybe you can't handle it. Maybe you got to go into something, right? So just again, these little nuances, but I wanted to leave you with this thought though. This should be how you treat your supplements. This should be how you treat your food. I don't care what your doctor says. I don't care what your nutritionist says. If something doesn't seem right, feel right, look right, sound right, don't do it. Mm -hmm. It has to resonate with you. It has to respond well. Your body has to be okay with it. Yeah. We go back to the, be, take accountability and responsibility for yes. your body. You yes, know? exactly. So important. So much to be said, so much to be said. Absolutely. And uh, I like to segue into obviously the essential oil apothecary was great because you went into diseases and then we mentioned the beginning. So we're going to talk about, if you don't mind, the, the wonderful documentary that you have um, produced and directed, uh, Hope for Breast Cancer. It was such a powerful story, um, not only because thankfully uh, with your support and uh, also Hope for Cancer in Mexico being involved, um, uh, Angie managed to cure herself, but also have a baby, which she was told was never going to happen, uh, her second baby. And um, I'd like you to just, how do you even think about doing a documentary? That's a massive project. Yeah, I wasn't, um, I didn't sign up for that one on purpose. That was, it just happened. Um, we were very blessed in 2018 when I launched my first book, became an instant bestseller. And we had a master class that reached 160 some thousand people. And it was just a wonderful time. And it was actually a time of abundance for us financially too. And so with the hard work and with the financial abundance that came with that, I wanted to give. And we do, we normally, we give a lot to local charities, to churches, to organizations that sponsor um, impoverished children on the world. We do that on a regular basis, but I, I wanted to do something special for someone. And I realized, you know, instead of just giving money to an organization where I really don't know in who is and how someone specifically can be helped. Like I wanted to help an individual. Um, I proposed to my wife that we sponsor someone to go to Dr. Tony Jimenez's Hope for um, Cancer Clinic in Tijuana, um, Tijuana or Cancun, Mexico. And that is a completely um, integrative, natural and medical approach to cancer. And it's something that he had to do. And you really can only do overseas, at least for us in America, because some, some of the modalities aren't even allowed. Mm -hmm. um, at least they weren't when he started well, what, 15, 20 years ago. And so all safe, all signs back, but it's a cash pay thing. And there are a few organizations that sponsor patients and there are a few organizations, no insurance will ever cover this kind of stuff, no health yeah. insurance. So we went through and we talked to, we partnered with Cancer Tutor. Um, we partnered with Hope for Cancer and we said, okay, let, let's choose somebody. So we, we donated $50,000 to that project. And I didn't realize that I didn't realize at the time what it was going to become, because that's all it was supposed to be. Was this supposed to be a donation to help sponsor somebody? And then it hit me I'm like, 
why would we go through all this time and energy and money and not document it at least just to track progress to see how did this help? And from there was birthed the video series or the, the video that ended up becoming an award-winning documentary viewed all over the world. And it just tells the story of this beautiful young woman, Angela Lima, who had stage two breast cancer and, and what she did. And it was a very integrative approach. It wasn't all natural and it wasn't all medical. And you see how she navigated it and the emotion behind it. And I don't want to tell you more of the story. You kind of already shared a thing or two about it, but we offer free screenings of it. And that's part of the ministry that we do. And that's the other thing. We offer free screenings. We offer so many books and things that are, that are free. And if you want to watch the video, you could go to hopeforbreastcancer.com and just in F-O-R, not number four, hopeforbreastcancer.com and just watch it and get a free screening of the video and, and enjoy it. It's a, it's a, you know, hour and 45 minute documentary, but it was life-changing for me in a lot of ways and professionally and spiritually, it, it, it challenged me and moved me. And it also opened my eyes because I never had such a intimate look at cancer treatments through the eyes of a patient before. And, and most people can't, unless you're going through the sessions, the treatments, the appointments with a loved one, you have no idea what it's like. And I didn't, mm -hmm. thankfully, thankfully, I didn't because I've never lived through that experience with a loved one, thankfully. We've lost loved ones several over the years to cancer, but I was never with them at the doctor's appointment, listening, going through and seeing. And I got a glimpse, just a glimpse of it, just through video, just a glimpse of it, of what Angela went through. And it, it, it was very disheartening, but it was at the same time, very inspiring because you could see the war that is going on in the medical world and in the natural world and in someone's mind on how to handle the situation and to watch someone come out of it victorious mm -hmm. was every time I watch it, even the very end, I cry every single time. And it's so wonderful. It's so moving. It's so touching. And, and today, even when we we're filming this, um, Angela just celebrated, I forgot, I should know, but she just celebrated her birthday and she's, she defied the odds and she's doing fantastic right now. Yeah. And um, I believe at one point, and she might still, she actually devoted her life to helping and serving. And I believe she's still working for Hope for Cancer. She actually yes. got a job, yeah, she is. Yeah. right? She's still working there. Yeah. And it's just changed her life that much being, uh, anyway, I don't want to her story. So she was an NFL cheerleader and um, a singer, like just, you know, marketing executive. Like she's just a super sweet, talented young lady. And to see how this changed her world. Right. So anyway, that's another thing that I'll leave you with one, one thought. I forget the quote. It's been a while since I've seen it, like to memorize the quotes, but she talked about how she was healthy, right? She thought she was healthy. You might think you're healthy, but you realize, you know, are there areas where, are there areas of life that we can improve? And I'll tell you myself included. Yes, there are. Mm -hmm. Every one of us has areas to improve, but she didn't realize to the depth she didn't realize to the depth of, wow, I might look healthy, but boy, oh boy, there's something inside of me that's not working. And she changed her life because of it. And that was typically, it takes a travesty. It takes a, a crisis. It takes something to make someone want to completely change their life. But you look at her, you look at her husband five years ago. Wow. Picture yeah. perfect couple. Gorgeous. You know, again, NFL cheerleader, gorgeous. But, you know, just because the outside might look good, just because you think you're doing good, doesn't mean you are. And it's like, wow, your mind opens up to a whole new world. And I'll encourage people not to fall down the road of darkness on this. Just like you mentioned the pandemic, like you could easily get down the road of, of anger, deception, you know, I was lied to, I'm a victim. You, it's easy. 
it's easy to fall down that road to point mm. the finger at people, you know, but from a biblical perspective, there's something that really reminds, I love the verse that says our battle is not against flesh and blood. You know, essentially this is a demonic battle. This yeah, is, this is straight up a spiritual battle. We can't blame people. You can't blame your doctor. You can't blame the pharmacy. You can't blame your government. You don't look at the people. You look at the institution and that's where I want to encourage you all, because that's the one thing I see, like, that's the problem in our, in our, in our, in our, industry, my industry, the problem is it's, it's, it's quick to get angry. It's quick. We're quick as a people, as a group to point the finger. And then just like people don't like being beaten over the head with a Bible. No one wants to be beaten over the head with kale, you know, kale chips and essential oils. I mean, <laughs> we need to help and the love and love is the answer from this. And no, that most of the people, yes, there are some really, really bad people out there that are doing things just for money and they know what they're doing. But the vast majority of all medical doctors and all pharmacists and all people that are in this world, even the chemical manufacturers that are trying to make clean products, like they think they're helping the world, right? The hand sanitizer companies. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt and let's not point the finger at them, right? And let's realize that we are in this together, but know that we need to change. Because there might be a moment where you feel betrayed. And I think that's common for everyone. There's a moment where you're like, wow, I was lied to. And you were, you were literally lied to since you were a little baby about what to eat, what to do, all this stuff. And how to flip that anger, betrayal, deception mindset into like, you know what? How am I going to help? How am I going to yeah. be part of the solution, not part of the problem? And so- that's been a, a wonderful transformation for me and for others that I've seen. And I just want to encourage you all with that, especially as you go through more of your podcast interviews and all the things that you're, you're listening to and watching out there. Um, stay focused on the positive and the light. Yeah, I, I do that even with my clients. You know, I'm like, it's, as you said, it's really easy to become a victim. It's the easiest thing to do because you don't have yep. to take responsibility. And I'm always like, you know what? It's bad what happened bad things happen, bad people happen, exist. But yep. what are you going to do about it? Are you going to just sit there and cry over yourself? Or are you just going to really be empowered to say, you know what, I didn't know better, but now I'm going to know better. I'm going to learn, I'm going to study, I'm going to educate myself, I'm going to be empowered. And I'm going to trust that I can actually do this for myself. And it always have it always works. If a person is not stuck in that victimism, it always works. They always become a better version of themselves, whether it's self or not. Um, and I wanted to touch on what you said about, you know, Angie looking so healthy. I think we oftentimes forget that health doesn't happen, like disease doesn't happen overnight. It's a, a, a progression of a very long time. And likewise, just like there is no medication that can, you know, medication can cover symptoms, but it will not make you healthy. Just like that, it takes time for us to become healthy by doing the right thing. So what does your body need and how are we going to supply what it needs so that we can be healthy? We, you know, as you said, God created our body in a perfect, perfect way, which means, yeah, we can get sick, but we can get healthy if we give it the right things. And when we get sick, is the body saying, you're not looking after me, do something better. So that's just the message. You know, if we start listening, it's the most powerful thing. I think that if we start listening, if we're in tune with as a creation, um, how in tune with nature we are, as you mentioned as well, and how like, you know, yeah, always talks to us and says, you have to listen to your body. I've given you everything you need. It's the ble biggest blessing. It's the biggest blessing. Yeah. Well, I'm, I, I mean, I love, I would love to talk to you for another five hours because you have the, you have the gift of the gift of the gap. You can talk and you can make it interesting and fun and we could go on forever. Um, and I hope that maybe we can have you back on maybe even with Mama's D to talk about, you know, uh, looking after children in a healthy way in their pregnancies. I mean, she's an expert in babies and it'd be nice to have her to talk about that actually. So maybe you'll be back. And, um, you know, I really hope that whatever comes up, um, whatever project you have coming up, that it will be amazing. We will we'll always share it on my side. You can be sure of that. And I really want to thank you for all the work you've done, all the beautiful sharing and, you know, the resources that you created. It's, um, it's a true gift. So thank you. 
And thank you. It was an honor and a privilege. I really appreciated the conversation. And yeah, there is so much to talk about. And you know that, that that's it's a never ending journey. And that's the mm. wonderful thing about this. It's a never ending conversation. And so uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. And I'll leave you with one just thought of, you know, focus on something from this talk or from some of the other interviews that you listened to from this wonderful show. Focus on something that you want to do. Focus on something you can do. Focus on something you can afford. And it's the low-hanging fruit principle that we want to get quick wins. We want to do something that creates success. We want to do something that we we can accomplish. We want to do something that's that's not on Mount Everest. You don't start, you don't do your first hike up Mount Everest. You start with, let's go on a walk around the block. And then you say, okay, let's go out into a field and let's go out into the trails. You have to grow and but be patient with yourself. And that's the one thing. That's the one thing I see as a common denominator for most people who who don't push through is they get overwhelmed. And they look at the they look at the end. Don't look at the end. Look at the next step. And the next step could be making your own soap. The next step could be getting a diffuser and putting a drop of lavender to help you sleep at night. The next step could be you choose. But something that's easy, something that could be fun for you, something that could help you immediately. That's the way to go. And then you build on that. And you build on that and enjoy the journey. So that's it. And again, I thank you so much for the opportunity. It was my pleasure and privilege. And uh, yeah, look forward to coming back. Thank you. And me too. See you soon. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Z. And thank you everyone for staying on for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did and learned a lot too. Dr. Z is a larger than life character and he makes learning about health such a fun endeavor. I really hope that you have gained a lot from it and will go into the show notes to check out his website and his books, which are fantastic to have at home. Great resources. So guys, as always, if you enjoyed this episode, please rate it, share it, and comment so we can keep on growing and doing the right thing for you to learn more and more. I'll see you next week.